Hi, I'm Tyson Franklin, and welcome to this week's episode of Podiatry Marketing. With me, as usual, my partner in crime, Big Jim Mack. How are you doing today, Jimmy boy? Doing fantastic. It's that time. It's the holidays. Let's get into the holidays here. It's got to check out my Christmas shopping list, right? The days are ticking away, and I keep putting it off. So I'm feeling the pressure today, Tyson. I'm definitely feeling the pressure. So I just I called you Jimmy boy then, which I haven't called you before. What is the, do you have an Irish background? Yeah. So James McDonald. that's, so I've got a, I've got a mix kind of Irish, English, and Scottish background. Yeah. Jimmy Boyd, Jimbo, Jimmer, Jim and James sets you, sets you up for a lot of different kind of nicknames. So yeah, I will respond to all of them. Anything that starts with J? Pretty much. <laughs> like, Not like Jack. J- Gemma, or... Gemma with it. Yeah. Jack ass or anything like <laughs> Jack <laughs> off. I don't know. <laughs> I was going to say jack off, but I thought, oh, is that going too far? No, but now that you've put it out there, we'll leave it there. Yeah. So what are we talking about today? We're coming back around to one of my favorite topics. I think it's something that, uh, even though we've talked about in the past, it's something that I think it's really important for podiatrists to, that we re- reiterate this on a consistent basis. And this is really jumping back into what is, uh, what are like five characteristics of a successful podiatry clinic website? Um, your website uh, for your clinic is something that everyone knows they need to, they need to have one, uh, but it can really uh, be a huge uh, source of building your expertise, really getting, shining a, a light on who you are and how you can service patients in your local area. So I think it's really important to get back to the basics because like sometimes we live in a digital world and I think sometimes we are, our eyes gloss over that, oh yeah, website, great. I know what one of those is. And you don't understand the kind of like the details that go into either building and maintaining a website that can really make a big difference and really help you stand apart from other clinics and other providers in your local area. So I think we're going to jump into uh, those five characteristics today. I know that you're on board with me with this, but I think it is important to go over these basics with our podiatrists just to they can know what's going on and ways that they can improve their current website setups. So what's the first part? Someone's thinking of putting a website together. What is the first part that they should really be putting the time and effort, especially if they've never had a website before. If they've just ha- opened up a new business, they're about to have their first website, they're not re- revamping an old one, what should they be concentrating on? Yeah, so I think the, the first kind of characteristic of a successful website that should be considered is making sure it's a patient-friendly design. When either either you're building it yourself on a, a platform like Squarespace or WordPress, or you're working with a professional to really hone in on, on building it, it's really important that you have a intuitive navigation and layout for the website. I think if we've been on websites before where you're you can't find the contact information, you can't find the how to connect uh, or contact yeah. the clinic, and it's a huge sign to a patient that like if their website is difficult, probably their clinic is going to be difficult as well, or they have an ugly website. What is the the clinic going to look like? So that that user that kind of patient friendly or that user friendly design is not only important for the utility of getting around the website and navigating, but it really translates to like what their expectations of you as a provider are and what your their expectations of your clinic is going to be. So that first impression is really huge. So it should be a clean, organized site, and it has to have that kind of professional aesthetic. If there's flashing lights or stock images and it just gets a an alert or an alarm bell to patients that "Mm, i'm not too sure about this podiatrist right the website looks a little sketchy i can't find what i'm looking for i'm just going to go back to google and find somebody else that looks a little bit more professional yeah i remember going on one particular podiatry website and it was a shocker there was so much information on the home page that I mean, it didn't know where to start. But then, as you scrolled, the bottom of the page kept chasing you up the side of the screen, <laughs> and there was so much information there that you'd be trying to scroll. I'm just trying to get away from you, and this thing just kept chasing you. And you did. You'd end up just leaving their page and going. That was an awful experience. And there were things flashing, and yeah, luckily there was no noise attached to it. But it was like being at the pokies. This thing just kept moving and changing. So. Yeah. And that, and this was a big podiatry company too. It was an absolute shocker. So it wasn't just some shonky guy. They'd actually had this built. Yeah. I don't know. One of those, yeah. But one of those features that I think 
a lot of people like the idea of, but I, it feels a little clunky still to me is like the, the live chat. And there's some websites and some tech websites that do it really well, but I haven't really seen any on a podiatry clinic website that really had a, like a smooth interface and it looked professional. They, sometimes you see these images of someone wearing like a headset with a microphone and yeah. it's like live, live chat now. And it just seems like almost like an infomercial or this weird, I'm going to talk to a telemarketer about my medical problems <laughs> now. So I think the live chat will get there over time, I think, but that's one area that I, when I look at it, it doesn't feel like it builds a lot of trust with patients. So like we talked about the role of this website design is really to, how do you get patients to, to trust that you are that local expert? And then you know, have them take action, right? How do they convert from just being a website visitor to a patient that's on your schedule or your agenda? And that requires clear callouts, a good design, ways that people can contact you where they think the button should be. So those are really important as far as building that patient-friendly design is that first thing you should consider when you're looking either to build a website or to improve the website you currently have. I hate things that just pop up unexpectedly. You come to the website, yeah. you're on the home page, and you go, okay, is this the business that I'm searching for? And before you can even get through the second line of the first paragraph, this box pops up. It says, would you like to join our newsletter? No. So you get out of there. You keep reading. Then another thing pops up. And you haven't even got to the end of the paragraph. And by then, I've usually got the shits. Because I'm thinking, you <laughs> usually know what? I'm you're back go to Google else. or to a different website by then. Yeah, because I'm thinking, just let me read through this and Know that I've, if I've read through something for 60 seconds, then there's a chance I'm enjoying what I'm reading. Then ask me if, a question, but they just would throw it at me straight away and you go, oh, now I've got to click to get out of there to get back to where I was. So yeah. I haven't seen that on any podiatry websites. Thank God. Yeah. Luckily, most podiatrists realize that's something that will annoy most patients and I haven't seen a pop-up too often either. Okay. What's next? So next is making sure that your website is mobily optimized. So you got to make sure that your website, the pages, the ability to contact and make an appointment in your clinic is optimized for mobile. People are spending more and more time on their smartphones. I think obviously for a long time, people were on desktop computers and laptops and it's easy. That's, that's probably the way that either you or uh, the person building your website, that's probably how they're building it is through a desktop uh, or a laptop. But you really need to make sure that the, the kind of the experience on mobile is top notch they're just for healthcare services. It's really important. Every, it's not only the small screen, but also now we have things like GPS within our phone. So if people are you know, searching for your clinic, it's going to pop up on a mobile. So it's really important to have a kind of a mobile responsive design and user experience. And that includes call search engine optimization, right? So it's making sure that there's the right text and the right, the procedures, the types of treatment you do is being written and can be seen uh, in a mobile way. So that, that's really important. So if it's you or the person you're working with, you have to make sure you're testing. Is it, how does it look on phones of different sizes? How does it look on Android versus iPhone? You just wanna make sure you have a really functional and seamless um, experience across all devices, whether it be desktop, tablet, laptop, or phone, but just making sure that it's mobily optimized because like I said, more and more people are just doing things with their phone these days and mm. less with laptops and desktop computers. Yeah, I use my phone all the time, constantly. And a lot of times you'll be with, especially when you're with other people, if you're out socially and there's any conversation and somebody mentions something, you go, oh, let's just check it out. And everyone goes to the phone to, to try and find further information. But because I'm, I work from home and in front of my computer all the time, I, will, I don't use it at home. But as soon as I'm out of the house, constantly, searching websites on the phone. And yeah. I think everybody is the same. <laughs> I'm the same way. I spend a lot of time on my laptop and my desktop, but when you're out of the house or sometimes when I'm just testing websites I'm building, it definitely spend a lot of time on that phone. So it's really important. I think it's sometimes the first thing that <laughs> people will sometimes see in the morning and the first th last time thing they'll see before they go to bed at night, which is a little, maybe it's a sad state of our, our society, but the cell phone, the mobile phone is, is huge these days. Yeah, I must admit. It's one of those things I'm trying to, when I'm going to bed, I hook it up and don't look at it. And then, especially since I've been back from America, I get up earlier in the morning. And as soon as I wake up, I grab my phone, I put it in my pocket. And then by 5.30, I'm out the door. There you go. And off walking. So then I've got the headphones mm -hmm. in. 
And I'm trying not to look or check or really do anything until after I finish the walk, come home, had a coffee, and then I go, okay, now let's get into it. What's <laughs> the next part after that? Yeah. So next is making sure that your website is full of informative and engaging content. So that's basically just saying any content that's on your website, written content, it just needs to be clear, concise, and jargon-free. I think it is as medical professionals, and even myself, I find myself writing in medical ease. But when people are reading your website, these are patients. They didn't go to podiatry school. They didn't go to residency. They don't know probably what a lapidus bunionectomy is. And uh, mm -hmm. while maybe it's important for them to know certain terms like that in the future, it shouldn't be their first contact or they shouldn't run into that right off the bat when going to your website. You really need to highlight the benefits of the care you provide in, in language that they'll understand. So it's really important to have things on your website if you're if it's possible. I know that some people in the UK or Australia aren't able to use them, but things like patient yeah. testimonials, anytime you can use before and after photos, or if there's educational materials about the different foot and ankle conditions you treat and providing some some advice, it's not medical advice, but maybe some things that uh, have been tried before, just so you can give them a little bit of information about you know, causes, potential treatments, so they feel a little bit informed and that before they make an appointment to know that kind of you are that expert. And then it's regular updating this content, right? Just because you built your website 10 years ago, doesn't mean that the, the, the type of content or the type of care you're providing is still relevant. So in order to maintain that trust and build authority in your local area for the care you want to provide, you really need to make sure that you have updated content, like I said, in a clear, concise and jargon free manner. What what you're thinking on how much text should there be with each page or if it's the home page or an article, because sometimes you'll go to a particular page and there is so much there. I mean, <laughs> it is so text heavy and the font is really small and you start reading, you go, oh, this is going to take forever. And then you go to another one where the font's slightly bigger, easy to read, and it gets to the point really quickly. It's not just dragging on to finally get to what you were searching for in the first place. Yeah, I approach this in a couple of different ways. I would say number one, if you can tell somebody through an image or through a video, as opposed to a wall of text, it's, it's preferable. I would also say that when you're scrolling, when I'm looking at my laptop or desktop, even on a cell phone, if you can, it's probably a little harder on the cell phone, but I like to see no more than like 50% of the screen have text on it. So maybe it's a, an image above it, but then there's text below or there's yeah. an image below the text or interspersed there. Even in blog posts, if you write 400 words about marathon running injuries and there's no visuals associated with it, maybe you have a little bit of bold te text or some bullets. Those things will definitely help break up the kind of the, the kind of how in intimidating or that wall of text kind of feeling. But you definitely need to have some en engaging visuals with whatever you're writing, whether it be the introduction to who you are, information about your clinic, um, the type of patients you treat. Like I said, blog posts, you really need to have that a nice mix of visuals and text. And when you do that, it's much more engaging. You're much more, more likely to get people to stick on your website. If it's 90% text and a little bit of images here and there, not very engaging content means that people are going to bounce and go to somebody else's website. Yeah. I have had some people where they will have a blog article, for example, it'll be say three to 400 words, few photos in there. It looks really good. But then they'll have something where they, they'll say, if you want to read a further, more detailed article and they click on that, it goes through to a different blog that is far bigger and a lot more information. This one dear friend that I know, he's got a, this one blog article. It's four and a half thousand or 5,000 words. I mean, it's massive. And yeah. he just said the amount of tra traffic that blog article gets, he said, just surprises him, but it's, it, but he feeds into it from other places to say, Hey, if you want more information on this, you read through it. And he said, he's never been able to write one as well. It just happened to be one we just got in this flow and it was just an interesting topic. It wasn't podiatry related though. <laughs> it was something oh. else. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The ingrown toenail, 5,000 words. <laughs> no one's going to read that. <laughs> no. Nah. Okay. So what comes next after that? Yeah. So next is this, making sure that your website has strong calls to action. Dang. Basically that's really important. If you don't tell the patient what you the action you'd like them to do, 
like then they're they wonder why they're on your website in the first place right usually when people are searching for podiatrists they're looking for someone to help them or one that someone they love or someone in their network with a foot and ankle problem so you need to make sure that you provide these strong calls to action also it's you really like we mentioned previously you want to make sure you have make it very easy for people to contact you you want to clearly define what these call to actions are whether it be you don't want 50,000 book now or book online or book appointment now stuff, but you definitely need to have it a few times throughout your content. Like we talked about, along with the images in the, in the text, having it on almost every page you scroll down can be helpful. And there's different ways to show it in a very helpful manner, but you want to make sure that people know how to book appointments with you. Some people prefer online forms. Other people like to have their phone number highlighted for patients to call. It's really what you like to do, but just make sure it's visible and, and not only visible from a size perspective, but for colors. I'll sometimes see websites that are all blue and then they have the phone numbers, the, the same blue as every other headline is on the web, on the web page. You want to make sure that it stands out these calls to action, right? It needs to be almost a, a different color entirely, or the button needs to be a visually appealing color that stands out from the rest of the content on the website. So accessibility, like I talked about the phone number, maybe it's an email contact form and the maps. You want to have that all very uh, easy to find on your website. And then, like I said, if you have an EMR that allows integration of online booking services or patient portals, making sure that's very clear as well, because there's nothing more annoying to a patient than having to go, go on a scavenger hunt on your website. The majority of places that people... Go ahead. I know it's only because, yeah, I was in the state. So I had a few days to myself at different locations, Nashville, Chicago, and all that. And I was jumping on websites of things to do at different times. And sometimes I would click onto a website and I'm going, where are you? Where's the meeting point? How do I book? <laughs> uh, and I'm searching through it. And I always say, confused mind says no. As soon as I got confused, I was like, yeah, I'll just go back to the list and see who else was there. And some of them, and I've, and I've been on podiatry websites where, yeah, because I'm always searching through them, but I'll find some and I'll go, oh, nice. Yeah, this looks nice. It's great. And I go, where are you located? Right. And, and I'm trying to figure out from the phone number, okay, I know from that phone number, I think it's in this state, but whereabouts are you in the state? And I've really got to search. I can't find the address. No, it comes back down to like understanding the patient journey. Uh, looking at your website, not from your perspective, right? We love that we went to school and we went, some of us went to residency and those things, but patients don't care about that. Mm. Uh, you don't want to have that given the way of your contact information, how to make an appointment, your phone number, the map, directions to your clinic. Those are the things that people are actively searching for. Maybe it's the, the form they have to fill out before they go to your clinic. So Making that as simple as possible, you'll have very thankful patients. And like I said, like nobody signed up for a scavenger hunt when they went to your website. And if you make it hard for them, like you said, confused mind says no, they'll just go find another clinic to go visit. So, yeah, I totally agree. So, what, what, what else would be how many points? I thought there was five points you've gone through. A yeah, few. so this is the last one. This is number five. This is really important. And, and this is getting patient reviews. And if you, possible displaying it on your website and why that's important is that we can go on all day to talk about how great we are i know that tyson not I, I know that tyson and i talk about ourselves all the time he's great oh, we're at awesome he's at coaching we're... he's great at helping you plan the marketing i'm the master of implementing all these different I... digital tactics and i do i said that i've said it previously and i'll say it again if this podiatrist out there and they're going oh i should have worked with you oh should i work with tyson or should i go and work with this big company where they're going to just farm me off to somebody who's an employee who works for them, who really doesn't care about me, then I'm just thinking, well, why would you do that? Yeah, <laughs> call me, call Jim. It's, I don't know, I don't know, it just makes sense. But anyway, that's just me. No, and, and that, that's, that's great advice, and I definitely second that information. But what's even more powerful than us talking about ourselves or what's more powerful than podiatrists talking about their own practices or their own training is that when a patient leaves a, a great uh, online review that really helps shift a, uh, the next patient's decision-making process, right? When you can showcase positive testimonials prominently on your website and other marketing collateral, if it's allowed by your state or your, the, the location you're in, fantastic. And you really want to make sure that anytime that you have a negative review that's addressed professionally and promptly, having patient reviews visible on your website 
is huge. And having a quote from a patient speaks volume. So uh, really incorporate some of the patient reviews into the way you build your website. I think that is fantastic advice. And I think if people go back and listen to this again and start and take some notes. So if you're not going to gym to help you with your website, if you're going somewhere else, it's just make sure you got this information. And when you, as your website's getting done and you're creating information for it, just make sure all these points are basically covered. And I'm sure, Jim, this is, I know there's a ton of other things you can actually do on your website. <laughs> but I don't want to have a list of the 450 things to do for your website, right? So just keep it nice and tight at five. I'm sure we'll discuss some other ones in future uh, podcasts. But what I love doing yeah. is saying to podiatrists, oh, so I take it your website went live on the 12th of April, 2021. <laughs> How did you know that? Okay. Because there were five blog articles all of that date, <laughs> and nothing has ch- nothing's been added since then. The other thing I would just advise people on their website is don't keep using the same photo from 1988. Yeah, update your photographs every now and then. <laughs> like I could still have on my website, I could still have hair. The photo where I had hair was so much better, but it's one of those things that the photos that you're using, and this goes back to what we said before about stock photos. I think even the photos of yourself, as you age and mature and become wiser, it is update the photos so it actually does depict who they're going to be seeing, especially well, with your team as well. Yeah, that's definitely finishing off on that note. I really want to encourage people to go back and evaluate and find ways to improve their current clinic websites, whether it's that photo from 1984 or... You have a ton of stock images. Just go look at your website from the patient's perspective because these things do make a difference. By changing some of these essential elements of your website, you can really stand out and effectively cater to who your ideal patients are. So really important to do those things. If you've been enjoying the show today, make sure that email a link to one of your your colleagues. Give us a review on iTunes and subscribe because Tyson and I are going to keep on putting out this helpful content. And hopefully you'll learn some things from it and it'll improve not only your practice, but uh, hopefully your life as well. So that is a fantastic way to wrap up, Jim. So I look forward to talking to you again next week. Sounds like a plan, Tyson. Okay. See ya. Bye now.